In this video, we are going to discuss antiderivatives. All that is is just going backwards on a derivative. So the first thing I'd like to start with is to recall that if s of t is a position function, then s prime of t equal to v of t is a velocity function, and s double prime of t, which is v prime of t, which is a of t, is an acceleration function. In other words, if we have an acceleration function, we can take the antiderivative and find the velocity function v of t. Or if we have a velocity function, we can take the antiderivative to find s of t, some position function. All right. If we had some way to reverse this derivative function, at least, then we could do so. Let's write out a definition related to that. A function, capital F, is an antiderivative of F on an interval I if capital F prime of x is equal to this lowercase f of x for all x in the interval i. So there is our official definition of an antiderivative. And as a quick example, for example, an antiderivative of cosine of x is sine of x, right? Since the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So one of our antiderivatives of cosine of x is sine of x. And now why did I say one of and an antiderivative? Well, it turns out there's a lot more. In fact, there's infinitely many antiderivatives of cosine of x. So let's write a quick theorem here related to that, and we'll see what those are, what the, that infinite uh, family of antiderivatives is. So if capital F is an antiderivative of some function lowercase f, on an interval i, then the most general antiderivative of f on i is capital F of x plus some c, where c is a constant. All right. So let's see a quick example related to that. Find the most general antiderivative of f of x equal to 3x squared. Well, we notice that the antiderivative of just 3x squared, one antiderivative of that is x cubed, right? Because when we take the derivative of x cubed, we get 3x squared. But our most general form just says to add a constant c out there. And now why do we do that? Well, no matter what this constant is, the derivative of x cubed plus c is 3x squared because that derivative of c goes to 0. 
So anytime we take an antiderivative, really we need to add plus some constant at the end uh, because when we take the derivative, that constant goes to zero. So here is our most general antiderivative of the function 3x squared. All right, let's talk about a few uh, general antiderivative rules. And we'll write those down real quick and then we'll end the video there. So we have a function here and we have some antiderivatives. So for the function x to the n, our general antiderivative rule is 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 plus some constant c, as long as n does not equal negative 1. What about for sine of x? If our function is sine of x, then our general antiderivative is negative cosine of x plus some constant c. Right? Because if we take the derivative of cosine, we get negative sine. So the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. And of course, the derivative of negative cosine plus any constant is still just sine, since the derivative of c goes to zero. All right, let's write out a couple more real quick. Recall that the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. <clears throat> Similar for cosecant squared, we get a negative cotangent. Derivative of secant x tan x is... Sorry, the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x, so the antiderivative of secant x tan x is secant of x. And finally, the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So the antiderivative of cosecant cotangent is negative cosecant of x. All right. And this gives us some base antiderivatives to work with. So you'll just want to know these rules for our antiderivatives. And we'll go ahead and end our first uh, video there.